The conclusion I'm hearing is that it feels like Tesla is at a point to start turning on supervised self-driving. And that has been the lever that we've been waiting for. You said something that really resonates with me, which is you can't stop thinking about V14. Yeah. They had an update within five days to get to the, I don't know what they're calling it, 14.1.1 or something like that. Yeah. So what's going on? Why are you obsessed with 14? And I, I think I know the answer, but I'd love to just hear in your own words for uh, sure. how you think about it. How long have we been waiting for a moment like this? Probably since V13 came out, I would think, because that was the last real step change. Yeah. And to me, that was like an, oh my gosh, like this is instantaneous. The first 30 seconds I was driving and I was like, okay, this is a different thing. Immediately yeah. way more human, way more natural, a very big deal. So I think it's basically since then. For me, it's like, this is a, you know, and just to be very clear and transparent, I haven't had a chance to ride in a V14 vehicle yet, but I've spoken to, I had Sawyer Merritt, Chris from Dirty Tesla, Chuck Cook. I had JD from AI Driver on my channel for an hour and a half talking about their experiences. I've watched all their content. I watch all their commentary. I watch content from other creators that have V14. I've talked to many of them. And the conclusion I'm hearing is that it feels like Tesla is at a point to start turning on supervised self-driving. And that has been the lever that we've been waiting for, not just Tesla investors or Tesla fans, but the broader public has been waiting for this like, oh, it's not really FSD. It's not really self-driving. I still have to pay attention. If I, I want to have to pay attention, why should I, why should I do the havesy thing? And I think that's why the current offering of FSD hasn't caught on the way a lot of us nerds expected. The general public, the normal people are like, if I still have to pay attention, why should I get it? It doesn't make any sense. I'm driving anyway. The regular person is going to look for the actual utility, the value that they would get from the self-driving thing, which is I don't have to pay attention. They're not nearly as impressed. This is not an indictment on their inability to see the technical prowess of the software, but this is more a commentary of just how regular people behave. If you can't solve a problem for them, then they're going to be like, I don't know if I should spend money on it. But once you're like, okay, you no longer have to pay attention. You can be on your phone or whatever you want to do while the car takes you from point A to point B. That opens up a brand new floodgate that no other automaker can do. Mm -hmm. The reason why they can't do it, it's because the generalized approach that Tesla has taken to solve for self-driving using artificial intelligence in the physical world requires millions of cars on the road collecting billions of miles per year powered through a multi-billion dollar compute cluster and then passed down to the most compute efficient inference chips in the world spread across millions of cars that cost $35,000 or less to build. Mm -hmm. How, how on earth does another company try to compete with that? And so that puts you in, on, in a quasi monopolistic situation long term, as long as they execute on the technology and the regulation allows for this to happen. Now we're seeing videos of the car going through drive throughs and stopping where it's supposed to be going when it's supposed to be. We're seeing ridiculous behavior in parking lots. All this stuff we were worried about a year ago is it's not even, it's a non-issue anymore. People don't really talk about it. That's a lot of words I just said, but <laughs> it's hard not to be excited. Yeah. The thing you said that really resonated with me was if you're not solving a problem for people, they really don't care. I think that's so true. So many of my friends who I've shared this to or like family members, I, I show them, like give them a drive and 95 5% of the drive is great, but then it breaks a little too hard or is slightly too awkward. And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't know that I would use it because I don't really mind driving. I think for the normal people, if you're just driving the way that they normally would, except that they can have their hands in their lap, but they still have to pay attention, they can't look at their phone, you actually aren't really solving a problem for them because it's just maybe a slightly more stress-free drive. But for most people, that doesn't move the needle. I think us Tesla nerds, like you were pointing out, we get so excited because we can see where this is going. <laughs> we're always looking around the corner which is why we get excited about these incremental improvements. It validates the path where you can be on your phone. You can be watching Netflix in the car. You can take a nap. And I think what's so exciting about V14 is it seems like we're really close. Like in all these previous versions, there was still a lot of correcting that, that still needed to be done, like somewhat substantial issues that needed to be fixed. And now it seems like it's at least possible that they could pull drivers out and have you actually not paying attention within months, which is new territory. I agree. And I think the one measuring stick that Elon has brought up before is, okay, we think we're going to be feature complete by X date, feature complete by Y date. When I hear the phrase feature complete, what that means is it can do anything needed for a self-driving network at scale or mm -hmm. a car that you don't have to pay attention at scale. And V14, again, like we, we don't have enough miles. 
we don't have enough long-term testing. But from what we've seen so far, it is a very compelling thing that says, we did it. Here's feature complete. It can do parking lots. It can go literally from parking spot to parking spot, truly without you having to pick a parking spot. It does everything. You can select where you want to park. You can say parking garage mm -hmm. or on the side of the street. So it has a customizable experience. We saw the videos from Hallmark's catalog where it went into this closed road that there was no signal of that on the maps. And it was blocked by a bunch of emergency vehicles. And the cars like, ah, screw this. I'm going to go a different way. That's it, it, it wasn't yeah. somebody in a headquarters saying, no, don't like turn around. The car's like, oh, this looks, yeah, I should probably try another way. Yeah, uh, like Elon talks about it being sentient. And I think that's one of the feelings on V13 and earlier where it just hasn't felt sentient. One of the ones that really stuck out to me, I think it was Dirty Tesla was saying he was routed to go this particular way, but then one of those like Pelotons of like a hundred bikers started going yeah. and it was like, oh, that's going to take a long time. And it just rerouted. So the navigation yeah. was still showing go this way but the car decided to override navigation and go around it. That sort of decision that, okay, we are not rigidly following the rules. We're going to make this executive decision to go this other way around. There's so many just like small examples like that, where this latest build seems to be making sentient type decisions. And that's super exciting. One of the biggest things that's coming across is not just the different things that it can react to, but just how quickly it reacts to them. So what we know from this V14 update is that it's it's a 10x of parameters. So what, for the layman, that means it's processing 10 times more variables than it initially was to try and make a decision. A simple example, it's okay, I'm paying attention to the traffic light and the pedestrians around me and the road and the curb and maybe a couple other things. What 10x the parameters allows you to do, it allows you to say, okay, but now I'm paying attention to this potential car, that potential car, all at once, basically all at once. And then it can compute all that data and then say, okay, this is the right decision to, to take. So it has dramatically increased the things it has to look at, but then on top of that, how it reacts to those things has also massively improved to the point that the feedback we're getting is that it's reacting just as fast or faster than I would have. Yeah. And that, that's a signal that the compute has the potential to reach human level as long as it can make the right decision, mm -hmm. level of safety. That, mm -hmm. that, that's the signal to me. So what does human level of safety imply? Imply one accident per 500,000 miles. Mm -hmm. And to increase that threshold, it just feels like more data and more compute. If they need to get beyond that to get approved as a robotaxi network long term, it's the improvements of what sentient means, the combination of different technical things that manifest themselves in the real world by quick reaction time and mm -hmm. doing things that we would typically think of, like, how would you even know how to do that? The car, yeah. it's just doing it the way you would. You're not aware of how your brain works, but you yeah. figured out how to make the brain work. Yeah, just another dirty Tesla example. He had a test where I think he had his wife, I'm not sure, so try to like back into the car while V14 was engaged and the car backed itself up. That's what you would do as a human, assuming it was safe to behind you. So many of these random edge cases seem to have been solved recently. One of the issues, even on the robotaxis in Austin, was that UPS truck backing into the into the Model Y and it was just staying there. We're literally just months away from RoboTaxi launch and we've already got a significant increase in these capabilities. To me, it just seems like they've cracked it. I Elon agree. was saying earlier this year that by the end of this year, we'd be able to have unmonitored FSD watching our Netflix or phones or something like that. And it would grab our attention. It needed us to handle the situation. I thought, okay, that's Elon time. He's over promising. Maybe in 2026, we'll get that. But I still think they don't do it in the next two and a half months. It seems like it would probably be safe for them to do that. I think they don't out of an abundance of caution and to get the data really clear that they are safer than a human. But what are your thoughts on when we get to that point? I agree. This is something that I've been racking my head. Like, like the talking head I did yesterday was like, it's not a question of if it's when it's obviously yeah. become a question of when I think it's obvious to anybody who follows the Tesla story closely that any sort of negative attention that Tesla gets is a hundred times that of Waymo or any other company. The perfect example was when we recorded a video of the Waymo, fantastic technology, but clearly doing some unsafe stuff in front of Terry Blacks. It got n basically no media coverage. But then if there's a video that I put together a RoboTaxi doing something stupid, it gets blown out of proportion as the most unsafe thing in the world. The team is very cognizant of that dynamic. The thing that could derail their chances of expanding as quickly as possible is drawing regulatory or public mm -hmm. disdain that will slow them down. That being said, 
if they have data internally that says if the human wasn't paying attention here, we're going to be better off. Similar than how FSD yeah. on with a driver is seven times safer than the average safety in the United States or something. Mm -hmm. If they have that in the data that says when people don't pay attention in these situations or when the car has it in these situations, a human being in control is actually worse. Who would be an idiot not to push that out? Because yeah. that's going to impact insurance. That's going to impact all kinds of stuff. One of the other interesting angles I've been thinking about a little bit is they were saying, I think it was the last earnings call, how they're seeing some people disengaging FSD so they can look at their phones, which is obviously super dangerous, yeah. very obviously <laughs> increases the overall risk. And Elon, to his great credit, says all the time, and he actually acts on this, that he believes in the reality of doing good more than the perception of it. So I think this is one of those cases, having increased monitoring and the more strict rules might on paper look better because then, oh, somebody really was looking at their phone and they get into a crash. We told them not to, and it was really their fault. I, I think Elon actually cares about reducing the total number of risks, regardless of whether it was FSD's fault or the human driver's fault. And so I think for that reason, he's going to be more aggressive than almost any other CEO would be at pushing it out at the prudent time where it's actually more fully optimizing for reduction in total risks. I would love to pick your brain on this too. From my standpoint, it feels like it's ready by the end of, at the very latest next month. I don't know why for, they're- For unsupervised? I, I was saying just like Sorry, normal, v, normal V14. But actually I'm curious in your answer on both. Yeah. When do we get 14.1 or 14.2, whatever, when they end up going shipping wide? I think they want to get it out to the fleet first before they turn on unsupervised yeah, to collect sure. enough data. Yeah. I think the peasants, <laughs> so all of us, which are still extremely fortunate to be able to do this beyond fortunate, will probably get it no later than next month, end of next month by Thanksgiving. I think we'll have a broad rollout of 14 supervised. Mm -hmm. And then I think latest mid next year we'll have unsupervised. So which one do you think is the bigger catalyst removal of safety rider or unsupervised FSD in people's cars? I think the removal of the monitors is going to come first. And so that's going to be a big signal that it's ready for a larger scale. But like, to me, whenever you and I can just use our own personal vehicles unsupervised where we're literally in the back seat, that to me is a very obvious catalyst that it's solved and done and demand for Tesla vehicles and FSC is through the roof and RoboTaxi is scaling immediately <laughs> with massive earnings implications. So that's going to be the bigger catalyst.